I've backed up my files in this external hard drive. From time to time, I update the backed up files when I make changes to the original files, so that if something sudden and horrible happened to my computer, I at least won't lose everything. To anyone clueless, this is a reading of an Invader Zim fanfiction. It's part of a series in the works, and if you're curious enough, I would recommend catching up to it first before you watch this. Unless, of course, you don't mind spoilers. I didn't bother updating the folder containing Invader 2 Insurgent after the last time I did because the video was already finished the next time. And because of this, something that was removed from Invader 2 Insurgent was left behind in the copy of the project. Last chance to avoid spoilers. This is a gem I recently discovered was still in my external hard drive. A copy of the project that was not up to date. As a callback to Bloody Gur, a quick frame of Bloody Gur was going to appear the moment Gur screamed and blasted red and purple with his laser vision. We've established that how many times in the past century? But this scene itself was already a callback to Bloody Gur, and I thought it was just fine the way it was. It was an opportunity, but when you make Tackling obvious opportunities a habit, they're less special. I hope that makes sense. Here's a reference. But if that's all I had to show, I wouldn't be making this video. Asgur was having his data, basically his soul, being sucked out of him by the Sir Drive. The video was supposed to briefly cut to a couple dozen clips of him from the show and movie. Mostly silly and heartwarming ones. Like most flashback scenes, the purpose was to add to the emotion. But I cut it out because I felt that these visuals would make people lose focus on the audio. And that's not something I wanted to happen in an important scene like this. Reading is supposed to let the reader, or listener, picture what's happening in the story. And these random clips would have just distracted people from picturing Zim's last moment with Gur. At least the people watching and not just listening with it minimized. Granted, I still put flashbacks in my reading videos, but usually when they're being explained. It's easier to keep track of the audio when it's related to what's being shown. That wasn't happening with these flashbacks of Gur. I decided to show this because I think when it comes to the emotion, it still worked. And it was frustrating jumping around on Kim Cartoon trying to record these little clips while trying to get these stupid ads out of my face. One of his little arms slowly reached out to nothing. Or rather, for help or relief. He didn't seem to register right away that his best source of comfort was above him, supporting his head. Displaying total genuine concern in his language and features, Zim had brought himself down to one knee and held Gur's head straight, looking him in his almost senseless eyes. Gur, Gur, what's happening to you? The red was no longer flashing leaving blue and gray to clash with each other. Gray was winning. With what little strength and awareness he had left, Gur smiled again, rested his outstretched claw on his master's arm, and whispered something as silly as his utterance about pancakes. The true message behind it was tragic, however. Read me a bedtime story. I will point out that I still put Bloody Gur in the thumbnail. I don't know if any of you ever caught that. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. 